Well, g'day and welcome to the channel. As you can see, I'm out in the field. I've gone on a bit of a road trip. Why am I out here on this beautiful lake? Well, I've been very fortunate that Nikon Australia have lent me the Nikon Z9 and the Nikon 180 to 600 to try out. So I thought I'd just come for a bit of a drive and see if we can't photograph some birds and some wildlife and I'll bring you along with me. Uh, this is not going to be a review. This is just purely me out in the field taking some photos with this kit and sharing with you the photos that I'm able to capture. Believe it or not, I've already had quite a bit of success just driving to this location. So I had the camera next to me and I'm driving and I'm just scanning the side of the road. Obviously I'm concentrating on driving, but I kept getting distracted by birds. And the first bird I spotted was a brown falcon and this brown falcon was in a tree next to the side of the road. So I've stopped and uh, got the camera out and to my surprise, the bird didn't fly away. It enabled me to get some almost full frame shots. Now I am using the 1.4 converter at the moment. So I'm at 840 millimeters uh, on the full frame body. So we managed to get some shots of that brown falcon, jumped in the car, kept driving, and then lo and behold, 15 minutes down the road, I spot a black shouldered kite hovering next to the road, I've jumped out, and we managed to get quite a few shots. I think I might've had a little bit of heat haze because of the temperature, it was sort of middle of the day. Fingers crossed those shots came out, but it was an awesome start to the journey. So I had hoped to get the Z8, but unfortunately uh, the Z8's been sent to the FIFA Women's World Cup. So they've sent me the Z9, which I'm pretty happy about. It's a beautiful camera. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and photograph some singing honey eaters and some fairy wrens on this um, salt bush. So when we go inland Australia, we get this salt bush plant that you can see everywhere. And it makes for the perfect perch if you can get a bird up on top of it. So that's our goal. Often the birds will just perch on top. So I'm just keeping my eyes peeled for a bird on top of one of these salt bushes. So let's try and do that. First singing honey eater here. Beautiful. What a, look at this bird up on this perch. Oh, beautiful singing honey eater. Oh, we've got two singing honey eaters on this salt bush. How amazing was that? I got the monitor so you can see how the autofocus of the Z9 works and it just tracks the eye of the subject, very similar to Canon and Sony. Um, did very well then. Focus no problem whatsoever. Hopefully we got some nice shots there. Not a lot else happening here to be honest. It's a bit like that when you come to this dry country, you've, you've either got birds or you don't. And we had singing honey eaters but I'm not hearing much else. Um, I'm not hearing any fairy wrens here so I might drive down to the other side of the lake uh, where I've seen them before and we'll try our luck down there. So what a beautiful scene though, like absolutely stunning. There's quite a few uh, birds of prey flying around. So we had a whistling kite, and maybe a black kite. I had a wedge-tailed eagle when I first arrived, which is pretty cool to see a wedgie up that close. That's our biggest bird of prey in Australia. We're we'll going to try our luck somewhere else. So we've got this, we've got these, all these cormorants that are flying to roost somewhere, I'm assuming, and we've got these nice clouds. I really hope these shots come out because it's, it's quite cool. Just the shapes of the, all the cormorants in the sky. 
sometimes you just got to try things, you know, and that's the benefit of having a zoom. I can zoom in, I can zoom out, I can change the composition, and fingers crossed, a couple of those shots came out, and there's still more of them flying now. Oh, I can hear fairy wrens. So I can hear fairy wrens. I'm just not sure whether they are um, white winged or superb. But that's a promising sign. Let's see if we can't find them. So it's probably important that I share when I fail as well. Um, I just haven't been able to get anywhere near these um, fairy wrens, unfortunately. Uh, they're definitely moving around and I can hear them, but as soon as you get close to them, they just fly away, which is the way it goes sometimes. <laughs> I can hear the fairy wren singing. It's tough when you've got beautiful light like I have now, but you don't have a subject and you're not sure exactly what to do. So I think I almost have to admit defeat. Um, <laughs> I've been wandering around and just haven't got anything. It's always tough, you know, like you've got your hopes up here, you're hoping to get all these different species and I'm a little bit disappointed at the moment because I didn't get the fairy wren, but if I reflect on what I got today, I've got a few different birds and I probably improved on some of the shots and I've had a great time. Um, the lens is performing well and the camera's obviously performing well. A bit heavy because this body is so heavy, uh, especially with the monitor on top, but overall a very successful afternoon. What I'll do is um, we'll head out again tomorrow morning and we'll try and get some more photos. So uh, I'll see you in the morning. So I just want to take a minute to mention fellow YouTuber Bird Burger. He's running his annual wildlife photography competition. He invited me to be a judge. I would have loved to have participated. However, this competition is unique in that it's judged live on YouTube. Unfortunately, the time of that is around 1 a.m. in the morning here in Australia, which is too early for me to participate. However, I want to encourage you to check it out and enter if you're interested in joining photo competitions. This has got quality photos, it's got great prizes. I think there's a thousand dollar main prize and prizes for the next categories down. There's lots of really good judges. There's fellow YouTubers that are judges. Highly encourage you to have a look. So there's three main categories. There's portrait, birdscape, and creative. If you want to know the price to enter, the judges, the rules, everything like that, I'll put a link in the description of where you can go to find that out. And if you want to know which style of photos do well in these competitions, they've got last year's winners. So check out 2022's winners to give you some idea of what the judges are looking for. If you enter, good luck and have fun with the competition. Well, good day, good morning. And check it out <laughs> covered in fog seems to be the story of my life with fog but um, it is what it is i've got up early i've driven out to the same location i was yesterday and we've got fog now there are some swans out on the water in the mist so i'm just going to try my luck and see if we can't get some moody shots of the swans in the fog in the mist hopefully we get some sunlight which creates some color so i'm actually going to be shooting with my ground pod today because i'm going to go down to the water's edge so um, as you can see, I've got my ground pod 180-600 Z9 and my monitor to record. So um, let's go and try and get some photos. All right, so I've laid down next to the lake and as you can see, we've got a lot of fog. Um, I'm just waiting for some colour. There are some swans floating around. Um, so I'm just going to be patient and just wait and see if anything comes across my path. My hope is that the sun will come up, the fog will dissipate, and because I'm already here, we'll get some birds coming by. That's the hope. So it's part of wildlife photography is just laying in wait, I guess. You can hear the swans calling. Birds chirping. Oh, pelicans. Got pelicans flying past. Whilst I'm waiting for the sun, I just want to take this moment to thank Nikon Australia for sending me the Z9, the 180 to 600. I'm extremely appreciative that, you know, I'm in a position to try out this gear. Um, very grateful. I never thought it would happen, to be fair. 
and I'm just happy to be here and trying this out and get sharing it with you and whoa all these cormorants there's a lot of cormorants here wow plenty of birds about but the light's still no good I'm not sure if I mentioned it but it's cold yeah, Pelicans in the mist. Sounds like some sort of movie title, doesn't it? Oh. oh, I'm liking these pelicans now. I can only imagine what it would be like with good light at the moment. Oh. So the sun is trying to make its way through the fog. And that's what we're waiting for. We just need a little bit of light. So we've finally got some light and <laughs> I'm getting excited because we've got birds flying around. We've got swans in the sun. Wow. <laughs> oh, I'm excited by this. Wow. <gasps> That's amazing. That's incredible. I really hope that worked out. Swans in the mist. Love it. <laughs> just makes it all worthwhile getting up this early the fog laying here in the cold and then we get a scene like that swans swimming through the sun like I could never predict that I couldn't plan that I couldn't dream of it just happened to be here obviously we've got the zoom lens which allows us to change our composition we've got 600 millimeters magic where else would you rather be eh in a warm bed. <laughs> oh. I think we're almost get ready for some bird and flight, I think. So the sun's coming up now. Uh, we've had a lot of success this morning. <laughs> Again, I, I re keep repeating this, you just don't know what you're gonna get. I had all that fog this morning, but the fog cleared, enabling some pretty unique shots, hopefully, fingers crossed. And I'm pretty sure we got some bird in flight. So I'm sure I got some interesting, creative and good shots this morning. Well worth getting up early, driving in that fog. So far, the Nikon has performed very well. It's nice to have the zoom. It's great to have 600 millimeters. I must admit I'm struggling a little bit with the stickiness of the 
3D tracking for bird and flight, especially if there's something in the background, it seems to get confused a bit. So I need to play with those settings a bit. Um, if you're a Nikon shooter, maybe let me know in the comments what autofocus that you use. I must admit the weight of the Z9 is uh, <laughs> takes some getting used to. I, it's just such a heavy body. I think it's 1.3 or 1.4 kilos. Once you add this lens, I can definitely hand hold it. No issue, but it does definitely get heavy. So I'm not sure exactly where I'm gonna go from here. I might go for a drive to a bit of bush, a bit of woodland, and see if we can't get some birds there. I've just made my way into the bush and there's a few parrots flying around. We've got red rumps, we've got eastern rosellas. I spotted a pair of red rump parrots in one of this, this tree and I've just simply hand held Got a few shots. We've got the male and the female. The male is the brighter colored bird, but I'm just gonna keep wandering around and driving around and seeing if we can't find something to photograph. <laughs> Well, I've wandered around in the bush and... <laughs> That's a kangaroo. <laughs> just <laughs> so I just started this outro and I'm saying I can't find anything and I just, just glanced over here and there's a kangaroo staring at me it's backlit it's quite dark you saw me I literally took a shot <laughs> oh when it's your day it's your day it's been amazing I'll be honest <laughs> All right, so um, that brings my little road trip to an end. It was just an overnighter, so we had two sessions and I've probably taken thousands and thousands of photos that I now have to go through and share with you. You would have already seen them. So what's my quick summary of the 180 to 600? I like it so far. Um, I've been able to hand hold, no issue. It's great having 600 to 180 or 840 with the 1.4 converter. The Z9 is a big camera. It's probably a little bit too heavy for me, if, to be honest, if I had to own it myself. Um, Autofocus, I've struggled a little bit just because it's different to Canon, etc. Um, it is working, the eye tracking is working, but uh, I'm just struggling a little bit to go from wide area to 3D tracking and which one's the best one to use. Let me know in the comments how you've got your autofocus set up. It's just one of those things that takes time when you're swapping from system to system. It, I can't criticize because I just haven't used the, it long enough to really get a feel for it. Overall, I love the 20 frames per second. As I've mentioned already, the video is exceptional. The IBIS and IS of this combo is excellent. If you're a hybrid shooter, oh man, Nikon's definitely leading the way in that regards. Canon's not bad either, but this one is very, very good. So I'm gonna continue using the lens and I'll definitely compare it to the 100 to 500 and the Sony 200 to 600. I'm gonna be busy over the next few days, that's for sure. But overall, a wonderful trip, really enjoy myself. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to see more content like this obviously hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel if you want to support me long term consider becoming a member for the price of less than a cup of coffee you can support the channel helps me get out to go on these trips and just enjoy myself and for that i'm very very grateful so until the next one take care happy birding see you later